Hello, everyone. I'm going to be talking a little bit today about an analysis of North Atlantic tropical cyclones and their impacts on coastal inundation in New York and New Jersey during the last millennium, which is some of the work that I've been doing with my co-authors recently. So a lot of the motivation behind this stems from the fact that we know that tropical cyclones present a major hazard for coastal regions of the United States. And we also know that the associated storm surge with those tropical cyclones can be particularly dangerous and costly. We also know that sea level has been rising in recent centuries. So that means that in a changing climate, future inundation of the United States, Atlantic, and Gulf Coast is going to depend upon tropical cyclones, storm surge, and the rising sea level upon which those storm surges are occurring. So one of the problems we face as we try to do a long-term analysis of these tropical cyclones and their storm surges is the fact that the observational record of tropical cyclones in the Atlantic is too short to accurately assess long-term trends, ranging from at best 1851 to the present. Our solution is to use a multidisciplinary approach that will combine long-term tropical cyclone simulations, storm surge models, and proxy sea level records to create a much longer record from 8850 to 82005 that will allow us to assess some of the long-term trends that we're interested in. So just to give you a little bit of an idea of the area that I'm talking about here, we are focusing on storm surge at the battery, which is shown by the red star on this map. We require that our storms that are producing those storm surges travel within 200 kilometers of the battery, which is shown by the red circle. And we're getting sea level rise proxy records from the two points shown by black stars in New Jersey, Great Bay, New Jersey, and Cape May Courthouse, New Jersey. So the first part of this multidisciplinary approach that I want to mention are the proxy sea level records. Here we're looking at a time series of sediment and foraminifera samples collected from those two sites in New Jersey on the previous map. And we're looking here at sea level relative to AD 852 on the y-axis shown in meters, and the year AD is shown on the x-axis. We've divided, we're looking at two, particularly, two particular parts of this time series. The first being what we're calling the pre-anthropogenic period, from before AD 1800, shown in blue here. And we believe that's a time period where we can assume that anthropogenic forcing will be minimal. And we're also then looking at what we're calling the anthropogenic time period from AD 1970 to 2005, when we can consider anthropogenic forcing to be dominant. The next part of our approach is to develop synthetic tropical cyclone data sets. What we're using in this work are two sets of downscaled synthetic tropical cyclones from the CMIP-5 MPI model. The first set is from the pre-anthropogenic time period from 8850 to 1800, and the second set is from the anthropogenic time period from 1970 to 2005. Each of these sets of tropical cyclones has about 5,000 storms, and those storms will travel within 200 kilometers of the battery in New York City. So finally, after we have our tropical cyclones, we need to create storm surges using storm surge models for those tropical cyclones. Here we're using two uh, storm surge models, the first being SLOSH, or Sea, Lake, and Overland Surges from Hurricanes model, which has a resolution of about one kilometer near the battery. Our second model that we're using is the ADCIRC, or Advanced Circulation Model, which has a resolution of about 100 meters near the battery. Now the way this works is that we take all of our synthetic tropical cyclones, and we're going to run them all through the slosh model. From the slosh model then, we're going to get storm surges for all of our synthetic tropical cyclones. We're going to look at these storm surges then and isolate those storms that are producing storm surges with return periods of 10 years or greater. So these are the storm surge events that don't necessarily occur often, but when they do, they have a high impact. You can think of something like Hurricane Sandy. Once we have these storms isolated that have the large return periods for the storm surge heights they produce, we're going to run them in the ADCIRC model. From the ADCIRC model, then, we're going to get storm surge heights with return periods of 10 years or for those storm surges that have return periods of 10 years or greater at just a slightly higher resolution. 
so we have a slightly better estimate of these storm surge heights. So after we have all of these parts of our, of our research set up, we're able to look at storm surge combined with sea level rise, which is what we're looking at in this plot. Here there are two histograms of storm surge. The first in blue is for the pre-anthropogenic era surges. The second histogram shown in red is for the anthropogenic era storm surges. And you can see by the bootstrap 99% confidence intervals of the means of these two distributions that they are in fact different from one another. And we are seeing that anthropogenic era surges are statistically higher than pre-anthropogenic era surges for the New York region when we're combining those surges with sea level rise. This is an important result for risk due to sea level rise for the region, but it's also rather intuitive since we know that sea level has been rising and we expect that if we combine that with storm surges, we are going to see higher surge heights. So we want to know then how might storm surge heights be changing simply due to the changing characteristics of the storms themselves. So here we're looking at distributions of storm surge height in New York City for the pre-anthropogenic era, again in blue, and the anthropogenic era in red without accounting for sea level rise. And you can see here that there's really not a lot of difference between these two histograms. In fact, if you look at the bootstrap 99% confidence intervals of the means of these two distributions, they're nearly indistinguishable from one another. However, we also see that both distributions have large risk determining tails where these highest impact events will be located. So what we're wondering is are there differences in the tail values here? To start investigating that, we've made a QQ plot. So here we have quantiles of the anthropogenic era surge heights on the y-axis and quantiles of the pre-anthropogenic surge heights shown on the x-axis. What we expect with a plot like this is that if the two distributions are in fact the same as one another, we would see all of these points, these quantiles, falling on the line y equals x, which is the dashed line in this figure. And you can see that for most of the distribution, that's the case. However, as we get out into the tail, we can see that the quantiles in the anthropogenic surge distribution are indeed a lot higher than those in the pre-anthropogenic surge distribution. So we are seeing that in these high impact events, we have a greater risk of storm surge in the anthropogenic era than in the pre-anthropogenic era, even if we're not considering sea level rise. So that's likely due to changing storm features. So we wanted to see what some of those possible reasons for these larger surges might be. So here we've got a QQ plot of the mean radius of maximum wind of storms, again with quantiles from the anthropogenic distribution shown on the y-axis and quantiles from the pre-anthropogenic distribution shown on the x-axis. And you can see here again that for most of the distribution, the two are very similar. However, as we get out into the tail, we start to see higher values in the anthropogenic distribution than in the pre-anthropogenic distribution, indicating perhaps slightly larger storms in the tail of that anthropogenic distribution of storms. We also looked at minimum pressure, which you can see here, we do see lower pressures as pressure is descending on each of these axes. We see lower pressures in the anthropogenic era than we do in the, in the pre-anthropogenic era. And finally, we've looked at maximum winds. And it's a similar story here where we see, especially as we get out into the tail, higher maximum winds in the anthropogenic distribution than in the pre-anthropogenic distribution. So finally, we've looked at the changing frequencies of tropical cyclones as well. So here we're looking at a frequency of tropical cyclones by category. And you can see that in general, we do see more storms in the pre-anthropogenic era. And here again, pre-anthropogenic is on the x-axis with anthropogenic era frequencies on the y-axis for New York City. We do see more storms in the pre-anthropogenic era. However, if you look at the major hurricanes, the strongest storms, category three or greater, 
we're seeing that there are perhaps more storms in the anthropogenic era that are very strong storms than in the pre-anthropogenic era. So all of this seems to be indicating that we might be seeing slightly stronger storms and perhaps larger storms in the anthropogenic era, especially in the tails of these distributions that could be contributing to the greater risk of higher storm surges for a region like New York City in the more recent era. So as we move forward with this work, we want to be able to do a more comprehensive analysis because right now we really have some intriguing results, but this is again only from mon one model. This is from the CMIP-5 MPI model. As we move forward, we'd like to look at some of the other CMIP-5 models and see if we're seeing similar results if we do a similar analysis. So we'll in particular be looking at the IPSL and the CCSM-4 models. And we would also like to, again, with those models, downscale synthetic tropical cyclones for both the anthropogenic and pre-anthropogenic time period and look at storm surge heights for those two time periods. Eventually, we'd like to look at future projections of coastal inundation in New York and New Jersey in the context of historical sea level rise, tropical cyclones, and climate change. So just to summarize and conclude a little bit here, um, we've investigated the impact of sea level rise on storm surge levels in New York City. And we've also investigated the impact of changing storm characteristics on storm surge levels for New York City using an interdisciplinary approach that employs synthetic tropical cyclone data sets, storm surge models, and proxy sea level records. And next, we're going to be looking at additional models to create a more comprehensive analysis. So with that, I'll say thank you, and I can take a question if we have time. Uh, questions? Yes. Um, I think so, but I actually have not done the storm surge modeling myself. That was done by Ning Lin, so I'm not, I don't want to speak too much and speak incorrectly about that. Yes. Um, the downs. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about the Can you comment on the nature of the downscaling from the cement models to the, to the synthetic cycle? Right. So the downscaling was done by Kerry Emanuel um, using a lot of the same techniques that he's talked about in his 2005 paper, I believe. Um, so that would be a really good reference to go and look at it. Well, great. Thank